Chapter 14 He has the sense of lines dividing once more, of himself as if he is sleeping, peaceful as if he is lying on a shore listening to the waves of the sea. He has gotten confused. There are people in the house, more than he can count, passing beneath in the corridors and outside along the porches. Voices of people everywhere, on every side, black voices and white voices echoing. He cannot tell whether time is passing or whether he is lying in it perfectly still. Roy is hovering above him. Nathan knows it is a memory, and he should not open himself up to that. But he lets himself see Roy, the clean, sad face hanging like a cloud. Then his father replaces Roy, who has disappeared. Dad jerks the cloth off Nathan. It is a cold day. Nathan is very cold now. He is not sure what day it is, and Dad is taking off the cloth that keeps him warm. Flashlights are trained on Nathan to augment afternoon light. Dad is not alone. There are other voices, other men, and the crackling of a radio. Dad is looking down at him. This is not a memory, but something else. Can Dad see the hole? Surely he can. For a moment, fear returns, as vivid as in the house in Rose Hill. It is as if the father of that night a long time ago, with that father's younger bones and smoother skin, he with his flat belly and strong hands leans over Nathan, and there is something tender and sorrowful in his expression. Nathan wonders how Dad got here. Nathan wonders what Dad will want to do this time. Will it make any difference that Nathan has a hole in his skull? But instead, Dad places the cloth over him tenderly. It is like a vision from some time in the future, or like something out of a dream. Dad covers Nathan's face with the gauzy cloth, and Nathan is grateful just for the thought of quiet whiteness that waits beneath it. Except, just at the moment the cloth settles over him forever, he sees Roy waiting behind Dad, his face emerging out of the shadow, drawn and gaunt. The sight fills Nathan with a longing he can hardly contain. He will shake his head to free himself. He has practiced the gesture for most of his life. He will find it easy. When he does, he will be in the present again, and he will be awake, and Dad will be nowhere near. He will shake his head and sit up in the attic and find Roy.